Hey guys, welcome to the very next Let's Build. This is going to be uh, the eleventh installment, which is crazy. Um, but we're up to we're going to be pushing fifty videos in this entire series of builds, so um, we're getting up there. But if you've been following along and getting it to this point, um, kudos to you. Thanks for doing so. This particular build is going to involve just kind of a book library app and what. The main purpose is is to like basically shop for digital books and then add them to your library so you can add one like this it goes to your library and as a current user um, I, i'm subscribed so i can actually download this this doesn't actually do anything but you could build something around the lines of downloading a digital book in such a way um, so think of it as like renting books but you can just download them too. The idea behind it all is that you need a subscription to do so. And currently I'm logged in, so I already am subscribed. I'm also an admin user, so you see these controls below. I mean, you could see in my drop down here that I'm an admin. And uh, another different take on our account settings is that we can see our card information based on stuff we did subscribe for. We're getting into a subscription model as well with this. So that's the big point of the series is to adopt a flow that is integrated with Ruby on Rails that integrates Stripe as a subscription model using the Stripe's new billing feature. And to give you more perspective of that, they just launched this new billing model and there's a whole new UI revolving around it where you can do different types of payments for different products you might have, whether it's products or plans or uh, one-off things. You're you know able to just kind of stem from one product or multiple products and do things inside those houses so to give you an idea i have a book library product which is my main app and inside that product is three different plans so pricing plans here all these ids that pertain to each thing are important we'll be using them in the app i have three plans so it's just basically 5 10 30 basically paying more gets you more downloads so that's how that works but if you click into one plan you have the plan id um, what what's going on with it all that stuff and you can view the subscriptions on it so each subscription is going to be based on the user that signed up and currently this one has the product of book library they're signed up to the starter plan, as you can see here. So this is me. And I j literally just did this before this recording. So we're gonna, you know, just kind of stem from this and go backwards and build this thing. So let me give you the full perspective. We can create a new book. What's nice about this app is we're using Rails 5.2, which is completely new. Basically, there's some new things we're gonna be using that involve active storage is what it's called. And if you've been following along, we've been using gems like Carrier Wave and Paperclip that help us upload things or attach uh, images to our records. And this one is built into Rails now, so you can actually use it to, you know, create an upload and just it belongs within Rails and you can tie it into Amazon, AWS, drop, um, other services like that, like DigitalOcean or um, Azure. Uh, lots out there to tie it into with just passing credentials in and it works really smart you don't even have to add records to your models to do this with, like we would in the past so it's kind of nice um, but we'll get into that more as we go also a new thing is the um, i guess secrets or keys that you would use in a given app there is a new way to go about that in Rails 5.2, which we'll be using. I'll actually have to share a key with you guys that you can use to download and use this uh, app at will. Uh, I don't know how it'll work because I don't really want you to use my Stripe keys, but at the same time, my account's just a testing account. So worst cases, you can provide your own products and just use this app as is. So I'll, I'll figure that out, but don't worry about that for now. So other than that, we can go and add books to our library based on what books are available here. I only have two at the moment, just based on time. I didn't have time to upload a bunch. Uh, so we can just add this one to our library here and you can see it here. We can remove one if we want. And once it's removed, it'll, t it'll just stay in the library, but you can go back to the homepage, see which ones are there or not. And then let me walk you through the actual process of signing up. So we have a, a traditional pricing page. So if you're not logged in, this is going to redirect you back to the sign up page. You can go that way, or you can actually just click the sign up link, both route to the same place. So even if you click this button, it'll go to 
uh, user sign up. And that's all just based on the fact that you're not a logged in user because this app's going to work in such a way that I want you to pay before you can even make an account. And that's kind of a common thing with a SaaS based application, I would say. So to sign up, you would go through the flow and just do, I'll just do like my general John Smith. And we'll sign up. It's going to redirect us back to the pricing page, which is a new handy little thing that's built into Devise. We can actually hook into where that redirects after you sign up, which is awesome. And you notice I'm kind of locking the user in the flow here. They can only go one way unless they use their back button, which they're totally capable of doing. That's fine. But the logo doesn't click to go anywhere. Anywhere else on this page basically takes you through to the payment form. And on each of these plans, I'm passing in parameters. If you look in the bottom left down there on the link window, you can see it goes to subscriptions new with the question mark plan equals bookworm, which is what I call the plan, and then the plan ID. So each one of those have unique names and IDs associated with them. And those all come from Stripe. So that's how it's working these days. So within the products, you can see that those IDs are actually what we're hooking into. Uh, so hopefully that's making sense. We'll get into more detail as we go, but this is kind of just giving you a basis of how this is all gonna work. Say I subscribe to the Bookworm plan. Here's a Stripe Elements form, just kind of adapted to our own design. So I'll just enter some card data. This is all test data. And we'll hit submit and it'll do its thing, hopefully. You'll see the URL up there had all those parameters in there, and that was important. With that said, now we can log in and add books to our library because we're subscribers. So you can see that it's my John Smith's library. We can do what we want with this library. Uh, if you go back to our customers, you can see Jay Smitty just came through, which is good. And uh, let's see, billing, subscriptions, you can see that is there now too. And Within that subscription, you should be able to get some data back to see what he's subscribed to, which is the bookworm one, which is the one we just did. So it's $10 a month, which is awesome. And a little thing to do as well is to give the user the option to cancel their subscription. That obviously would be important. So I went ahead and add that. It just adds a are you sure thing. Hopefully this works. I didn't really test it. Yep. So that canceled that. If we refresh this, I'm assuming it will drop out. Refresh, uh, let's see if there's active subscriptions. Yep, you see it's gone now, so that's great. He's still a customer though, so we save the fact that that user still exists in Stripe, so if we were to ever subscribe, we're still taking his ID, his customer ID, and just associating it with the new subscription if it comes through, so that's, a lot going on with such a simple app, but that's kind of how things work in the SaaS model. So you'll notice he's not an admin, so those controls aren't there either. So that's pretty cool. So the show page is nothing special. We could just add it to the library the same way. It looks like I didn't do the full, if they destroyed their plan, they, sh they shouldn't be able to add to the library. So that's just something to take into account, but they do still have their account. So I think that's a flaw but that's okay. So that would probably be more of the cancel your entire account option, but that's something that I honestly just ran out of time and overlooked. So, but that's kind of how you would cancel a subscription. It did work on the Stripe end, so that's important, but you need to hook it back into your app to basically say if that user subscribe, they shouldn't be able to do these things, like remove an ad from the library and download the books. So that's a pretty big oversight, but hey, I'm human, so. Okay, so beside from that, that is the app itself. To kick this app off, we are using my kickoff repo. This is, I'll link to it, basically just a starter template for Rails. It saves me time to do this stuff. There's still a bunch to add to our app that we're gonna have to do. Overall, this is where I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna actually just do that real quick in this video, and then we'll kick things off in the very next. So I'm in my demo app right now. I'm gonna actually move this to Okay, so I will go over here to this tab and close my server. And in fact, let's do that too. Bamp up the size, clear that. I'll CD back into my main sites directory, which I've been using. I've already cloned that kickoff repository down, so I'm gonna just CD into that one. And then I'll run a Rails new, and we'll call this book library. And then uh, let's see, pass M 
and template RB. And this is inside kickoff, so make sure you do it in there. And then I'm going to run that. It's going to run all of our stuff and make sure it's all working. Uh, you will need, if you've been following along my other videos, you probably don't have the 5.2 gem installed of Rails. You'll need to either update that on your global gems, which is gem, you just type gem update Rails. Like that. I'm not going to do it now because mine's already up to date, but you'll need to do that. So make sure you do to use these new features we're going to be using. So I'm going to name this one book library. It's going to do its thing. I'm also running Ruby 5.2.1, I think. Not 5.2, 2.5.1. So that's something to take into account. And I open this with just hitting open period on my Mac. It's got the book library app ready to go. I'm just going to drag that into my main sites directory and then we have that ready to roll. So I will CD back into that main directory and then CD into book library. And it should have already run bundle and install and everything. So I think we should be able to run rails server. So let me see rails server okay so with that done we should have our app at localhost 3000 there we go so this is a starting point the next few videos will get things kind of hooked up and ready to roll so let's do that in the very next video